Hey everyone, I'm Almar of AlmarsGuides.com and in this video here I'm going to be talking to you about the Juggernaut build in Titan Quest. So this build is a combination of defense and earth mastery and if you've been following my channel for a while you might already know that I've done a Juggernaut build guide however that one was physical damage based and this one I'm going to do more or less properly I guess which would be fire damage based. So uh as always, first thing I'm going to do is go over the skills, and then we'll go over the gear, attributes, and then we'll go into a little bit of gameplay. So, first thing, in Defense Mastery, the first skill tree we're going to go over, starting on the left side of the skill tree, you'll see that I have Adrenaline. I just have basically one point into Adrenaline and one point into uh, the two passives that come with it. This is just to have it, so it procs. I put one point into it, that way uh, the plus skills on my gear... Um, benefit the ability other than that i didn't really put too much into it it's not that great of an ability it's decent but you know it's usually not required for uh for many builds it's just a nice little extra help unyielding phalanx is the next ability uh in the defense tree that i got and this is one of my favorite abilities in the defense tree it basically summons a little line of ethereal warriors and they uh, will deal damage to any enemies that walk in the line. And also you can kind of use the, the Unyielding Phalanx line similar to the Rune Mastery um, uh, Men Here Wall or however it's pronounced ability. Essentially you use that as a uh, line to block enemies from getting to you. So you can drop down the ability as either an offensive thing if you want to use the Unyielding Phalanx to do a lot of damage or... You can drop it down as more of a defense thing to block enemies from getting to you. Either or, it's useful for, for both situations. I personally like to use the ability uh, when I'm fighting a pack of enemies. I'll run in there and I'll throw that on the ground. And it will usually end up killing all of the enemies uh, without me having to do really anything. So the next ability on this list is Rally. And... Uh, this is going to be one of the bread and butter abilities for this build. And the main reason this is a bread and butter ability for this build is because of the uh, the final thing you see here. Or the final passive, sorry. Called Defiance. The reason this passive is so important is because of the 65% elemental resistance that comes with it. Essentially, so long as you have Rally active on yourself, you will have the 65% elemental resist from that passive. So, if you can keep rally up at all times, you'll be able to. You'll be. You'll have the 65% elemental resistances from it at all times, which means you won't have to focus as much on your gear for elemental resist, and you can get other things on your gear that will benefit you instead of instead of that. The other passives for rally aren't that great, so I wouldn't worry too much about them. Also, another thing as far as rally is concerned. Uh, keep an eye on how many skill points you invest into Rally because uh, the amount of health restored from Rally is quite high. As you can see right now, uh, my Rally restores 4,860 health, which is like 90 health more than I have. So it you know doesn't make too much of a difference. Also, uh, one thing you should keep in mind too is in order to reduce uh, the cooldown or yeah the cooldown on Rally, you're going to need a lot of gear with. Uh, Re minus recharge on it aka cooldown reduction gear uh that is one of the one of the main things that we need for this build in order to uh in order to make it work quite well also cooldown reduction gear will also help with the quick recovery ability which uh we'll talk about in a second so after rally we're looking at battle awareness this is uh going to be a uh, a buff that we're able to keep on us at all times it's not like a short duration buff like rally where you're going to have to constantly refresh it you only ever have to refresh battle awareness if you die uh or if you get dispelled uh, essentially it offers you a lot of protection uh the main good thing about um battle awareness in my honest opinion is the final passive iron will this grants you a lot of secondary resistances to like sleep, stun, and trap freeze. I mean, really everything, every secondary resist there is, you get with Iron Will. So it's it's really, really good as far as that goes. Uh, so quick recovery. This is the other ability that I was talking about a moment ago. Quick recovery, uh, like I said before, if you have a lot of cooldown reduction gear, you will be able to keep quick recovery up at all times. Like you see right here for uh, my quick recovery, it lasts uh, for 41 seconds, and I have it on a 37 second cooldown. So I'm able to, uh, there's like a, what's that, 37, 8, 9. So a four second downtime, basically, 
on uh, on quick recovery or four seconds in between the cooldown coming up and me being able to uh, end the buff still being on me, if that even made sense. So uh, the next skill that we're looking at in, uh, in Defense Mastery is Colossus Form. And uh, really anybody who goes into Defense Mastery is going to know about this ability. It's the ability that makes you really, really, really big. And uh, I have one point into it because I use it on bosses and uh, hard packs. But it's not really my favorite ability in Defense Mastery. It makes you really, really overpowered and really, really powerful. You know, that aside, I, uh, I really hate the controls in Colossus form. I feel as if clicking on those little tiny enemies trying to uh, target them is a lot harder when you're this big giant. And it can be a it can be a little frustrating because then your character like runs back and forth across the screen and while you're trying to click on stuff and do damage to it. Um, as far as the passives in Defense Mastery go, you can skip uh, pulverize, disable, shield smash, and concussive blow. All of these are meant for characters that are doing a lot of melee damage, and we're not going to be doing any melee damage. Our weapon really is nothing else but a stat stick. Uh, and since we're not attacking in melee combat, we don't need any of those passives that, you know, benefit melee combat. So just skip all of them. The only passive uh, that we're going to be getting in Defense Mastery is Armor Handling, which you see right here. This uh, reduces the strength requirement for your armor and shields that you're wearing, and it also gives you a little bit armor absorption. As far as passives go, it's not really that great. It's better for lower levels. Uh, especially uh, early on in the game, which is good because it's at the bottom of the skill tree. But at least later on in the game, armor absorption, to the best of my knowledge, doesn't help that much. However, you might still benefit from the strength requirement reductions on armor and shields, especially since we're not going to be investing a lot of our points into strength uh, late game outside of wearing gear. So it is quite useful still. So moving over to Earth Mastery, we're looking at... Uh, Earth Enchantment, the first ability in the list. This ability you're going to want to get as well as the passives that come with it. Uh, as you can see, Brimstone, it's a pretty powerful passive. It increases uh, physical damage by 30%. It still will benefit us a little bit because we still deal physical damage with some of our abilities. But the main thing we're getting Earth Enchantment for is right here, the 150% fire damage and 150% burn damage, which is just phenomenal. And it will significantly increase the amount of damage we deal. And that's really all you need to know about uh, that skill. So Heat Shield would be the next one in uh, in the tree. And Heat Shield, more or less, uh, you'll want to use this on yourself at all times for the 15% physical resistance that it gives you. Uh, so long as you keep this buff up at all times, you'll benefit from the 15% physical resistance. Usually enemies won't knock Heat Shield off of you. I, uh, I can't remember what usually knocks heat shield off. I think when it absorbs enough fire damage, it uh, gets knocked off. Yeah. So occasionally when fighting enemies that deal fire damage, you will get heat shield knocked off a little uh, prematurely. But that's okay. You can always refresh it. It has a... Uh, I can't remember the duration. The duration is pretty long though. Uh, the cooldown is only like 37 seconds or like 40 seconds, whatever it may be, uh, without recharge gear. So it's not that bad of a cooldown. You can usually keep it up on yourself 24-7 without much issue. So Volatility, this passive in Earth Mastery. This one I always like to point out because it's one of the best passives in Earth Mastery, if not the entire game. Sorry, hiccups. Pretty much uh, what this does is it increases, well, it gives you a 33% chance of either giving you 250% uh, fire damage, burn damage, or 125% uh, physical damage. And uh, so that's basically a one in three chance that your abilities will do a shit ton more damage. So it's quite powerful in my opinion. Uh, summon Core Dweller. This is the pet in Earth Mastery. And um, as far as pets go, I don't really like him. I mean, he's a halfway decent pet. He's not as good as like the wolves in nature or uh, the Lich King in Spirit. But he is a somewhat decent pet. One thing that kind of is unfortunate about him is, uh, I mean, he is very, very tanky, which is the main reason that we're going to be using him often. But the thing that's unfortunate about him is there's really no way to heal him, and he's not, he doesn't regen very quickly. So he's going to carry all the damage he takes with him from battle to battle, which means you're probably going to be resummoning him a uh, decent amount. As far as passives go, 
for uh, Summon Core Dweller. I definitely recommend you get Metamorphosis, and I recommend you get Inner Fire. However, I'd recommend you skip Wildfire. Uh, Wildfire, it just it gives them a little bit more damage, and it's it's not really that good. Uh, Metamorphosis, though, and Inner Fire will increase his survivability, which are both good. So Meteor Rain, this uh, ability is one of uh, what I would consider a bread and butter ability in Earth Mastery for this build. Essentially, it calls a bunch of uh, meteors down from the sky that deal damage to any enemies in the area that um, you use the ability. And also it has a uh, it has a chance of inflicting stun on enemies. I'm pretty sure it's a 100% chance of inflicting stun on enemies. However, uh, that will be modified by the enemy's resistances. If they have very high stun resist or if it's an enemy that can't be stunned, uh, then it won't stun them. If there are even any enemies that can't be stunned, I... I honestly don't know the answer to that question. Uh, somebody correct me in the comments if you do. Um, I personally like this ability though. Quite long cooldown. However, it uh, deals a lot of damage. So, that it, usually I, uh, I like to use this ability when I run into a group of enemies. I'll just drop Meteor Rain down on top of basically all of them. And uh, a lot of the times it one-shots the whole pack. I guess it depends on what, it, uh, what area you were in though and what enemies you were using it against. Uh, your, uh, your experience may vary slightly depending on that. So Fire Nova. This is one of the other really good abilities in Earth Mastery. Uh, Fire Nova. What's so good about it is the impaired aim debuff that it has a chance of applying on uh, ranged enemies more or less. I mean it'll apply them on melee enemies too but it's kind of pointless on them. It doesn't impair their aim any since they're not aiming at anything. But it's a very good ability against Archer enemies. And anybody that's played this game long enough knows that Archer enemies are the most deadly enemies in the game. And quite possibly the most frustrating enemies in this game. So anything you can do to reduce the damage they deal is worth it. And Impaired Aim does do that. And also a nice thing about Fire Nova is it also has a very, very large radius. As you can, as you can see, it says a 20 meter radius. Which is actually bigger than uh, our Meteor Rain. Essentially, you pop Fire Nova and it like covers the majority of the screen, which is uh, pretty darn good. So you don't have to like run right in the enemy's faces or the archer's faces and then pop it. You can just pop it and expect the little Fire Nova to reach out far enough and hit the archers. So Ring of Flame, this is another ability that is uh, quite good and I recommend you get. Uh, however, I'd depending on what part of the game you are, it would be quite good, I guess. It would be the stipulation I would put. If you are in normal difficulty, Ring of Flame will deal a lot of damage to enemies surrounding you. However, in uh, in the later version of the game, like in Epic and Legendary difficulty, the amount of damage Ring of Flame does is not very good and not significant enough to even draw attention to. However, uh, there's a lot of Titan Questers that call this the best leveling ability in the game. It has been nerfed a few times, so uh, that... That claim has been reduced a little bit. However, uh, there's a few Titan Questers that I still listen to. Like, um, there's a, somebody on YouTube named Clex Plays. He does a lot of good videos, and uh, he talks about this ability and how great it is for leveling. I recommend his content uh, for anybody who is unfamiliar with it. However, let me draw attention to the passive that comes with uh, Ring of Flame. This passive right here is exceptionally good because it reduces uh, the offensive ability of enemies as well as their armor. Uh, reducing their offensive ability will reduce the damage they deal uh, to you, which is uh, quite, quite good. So I would actually recommend you put like one, maybe two points in a ring of flame and then put uh, more points into soften metal. Because the debuff that Soften Metal adds to uh, Ring of Flame is actually better than Ring of Flame itself. So uh, moving on to the last ability in uh, Earth Mastery. Well, actually, I'll talk about one more ability after this. But this uh, last ability, sorry, three more abilities after the, two more abilities. Sorry, math is bad right now for some reason. <laughs> Volcanic Orb. Uh, this is going to be one of the bread and butter abilities for this build. Uh, it is the one that I have bound to my left click um, attack. And uh, the only downside of this ability is it has a 3.1 second recharge. However, the more uh, cooldown reduction gear you get, the less the recharge will be. And this ability de deals half fire damage and half physical damage. And the way this works is uh, 
first the volcanic orb that you uh lob out will deal uh half physical half fire damage and then also the vo volcanic orb uh will split into multiple fragments the amount of fragments depends on how many uh, uh skill points you have into the fragmentation ability and the fragments themselves that the volcanic orb splits into will also deal half physical half fire damage so uh essentially it's a uh it's a very high damage ability and uh it also one thing that's mentioning worth mentioning too is it also has a chance of stunning enemies which uh it's a very very short stun but it's enough to interrupt their attacks and uh buy you a little bit of time as far as survivability goes so the next ability i would like to talk about is eruption this is going to be uh well it is my right click attack for this ability and it is one of the uh bread and butter abilities for this build essentially every single fight you're going to be using both volcanic orb and eruption usually i will drop eruption on top of myself uh and then once the enemies get to me they'll take damage from the eruption and then i will lob volcanic orbs at them uh basically when they're standing on top of me too and uh that's usually the main rotation that you have for this uh for this build and the other ability oh an eruption does half uh physical and half fire damage if i didn't mention that which i'm pretty sure i did so there you go you get the information twice the next ability I would like to talk about is uh, Stone Form. This, uh, as you can see, I didn't get it because I honestly don't like Stone Form. However, it is a pretty good ability, and I know a lot of people do like getting this for Earth Mastery. Uh, essentially, it makes you immune to damage, and uh, it gives you a lot of uh, uh, reflection, too, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Basically, uh, you turn into stone, makes you immune to damage, you can't move. It boosts your health health regeneration by a teeny weeny bit, and uh, it gives you some um, fire damage reflection if uh, you get invest into the passive. I personally, like I said, I didn't get it. I don't really like the ability. However, a lot of reflection builds or other uh, builds, or rather other people might want to incorporate it into their build. It's completely up to you if you want to go that route. I... Uh, I just personally don't like the ability, like I said. As far as our armor goes, let's switch over and look at our armor a bit. Uh, I am using, I don't know how to pronounce this weapon, Lavatian, I'm pretty sure is it how it is pronounced. This weapon is essentially made for Juggernaut. Uh, it gives you um, plus 39% physical damage boost. It also gives you fire damage and burn damage boost, all of which are nice. Uh, also has a chance of reducing the enemy resistances and it also adds a like 800 burn damage over three seconds it is just and also plus two skills to uh um earth mastery i mean it's it's made for juggernaut what else can i say uh seal of hephaestus if that is how it's pronounced this ring is another ring that's kind of made for earth mastery uh as you can see it gives uh Plus 65% fire damage, plus 70% burn damage. Those are the two main reasons that we are using it. If you want to boost your damage with this build, you're going to want to stack gear with uh, plus percentage-based fire damage. And uh, the burn damage isn't really required. It's kind of insignificant because it only increases dot damage and it's minor. As much You want to increase the fire damage as much, much as possible. Most of the time, though, burn damage also comes on... Uh, any items that increase fire damage so this helm right here uh i'm mostly using this for the uh recharge reduction that comes with it also i'm using it for the uh minus 40 percent energy cost both of these things are very very important for this build uh this build is an energy hog you will be tearing through energy potions like crazy so any energy regeneration energy uh reduced energy cost or even increases to energy would be um very recommended and worth getting for this build this ring right here really the only reasons i'm using this are the pierce and poison resist that comes with it, it has a few other extra nice survivability aspects but I wanted it for the pierce and poison res. As you can see, my my poison resistance is quite low. This shield right here, we're mostly using this for the vitality damage resistance that comes with it. Although the pierce and uh, poison resist are also nice. As you can see, like I said, with the Chiron's loop, loop, my pierce and poison res is a little bit low. And this shield also comes with 15% less damage from ghosts and demons, which is not too bad of a uh, suffix on them. 
Odysseus's armor. I am using this mostly for the uh, the recharge reduction. Also, the uh, it has a little bit of survivability bonuses on it. But the main thing I wanted it for was the uh, plus 28% uh, physical damage boost and um, the recharge reduction. Really, other than that, I mean, honestly, you can pick a better chest armor for this build than the one that I picked. I, uh, I'd actually recommend somebody pick a better chest armor than the one I did because it's, it's, eh. But it's, it's, it serves its purpose for this build. Stonebinder's Cuffs, these are, uh, Anybody who's familiar with my builds will be familiar with this item because I use it on basically every build I make. Um, and what I would recommend is uh, I would recommend a monster and frequent arm slot for this build because then you'll be able to put the legendary primal magma into your arm slot. And for those of you who are unfamiliar with this charm, it basically just gives you plus 25% fire damage, plus 25% burn damage, and then uh, a few extra goodies on the... Uh, like 40 fire damage 40 or 50 percent reduced freeze duration but that won't matter for us since we already have max secondary resists and you can also get like a nice completed charm bonus like mine has which gives you plus 50 percent damage to demons which is nice too so the next uh item i have is myrmidon's pendant uh, the main thing that i get that i uh, am using this for is the resistances that come with it as well as the um plus 36 percent physical damage boost that it gives it also gives a uh, five percent chance to avoid projectiles and you also see that chiron's loop also comes with seven percent to avoid projectiles so that's not that bad to uh have either as a uh bonus coming on the weapon but more or less i want the physical damage that comes on it because it buffs a little bit of the damage we deal like I said, Volcanic Orb and Eruption both deal physical damage, so this will buff the physical damage those abilities do. And second to last item, Legards of the Flameborn. This item right here, the main reason I'm using it is the fire damage and burn damage percentage-based boosts that it gives. It also gives plus one to all skills, which is pretty nice too. Sorry, I have to clear my throat. Hold on. All right. So the last uh, skill I have, or sorry, last piece of gear I have is Apples of Idun. This relic I am mostly using for the 100% vitality damage resist that it gives. However, it also gives some nice survivability. And uh, I'm actually quite fond of the skill that it grants as well. Uh, it's essentially just a skill that procs when you're low on health that gives you, uh, instantly restores 10 10,000 health so basically like is a lie on hands it fully heals you and uh it has saved my life more times than i can count because it, spike damage in this game man it takes you out quite a bit and as you can see i have the completion bonus um 18 elemental resistances so looking at my um character sheet you might be thinking like wow dude your resists are pretty low well let me hit rally and now you can see my resists Instead of it being like 1%, I have like 66% and 64%. So long as I have Rally Up, my resist will look good like that. And if I'm fighting an, a boss uh, where I have to have higher elemental resists, then I'll just swap to Talisman of the Jade Emperor and roll with that instead of Apples of Idun. But I prefer Vitality Res uh, capped as much as possible. Hence why I went with the Apples of Idun instead of the um, Talisman of the Jade Emperor Relic. So, uh, looking at my stats, you can see I have uh, more intelligence than any other stat. Intelligence will boost um, our damage, our elemental damages, in particular our fire and burn damage. For the most part, uh, I'd recommend you only get enough strength to wear uh, a good shield and tanky gear. As you can see, I have enough strength um, to wear every piece of gear, obviously. My largest um, cost in strength for a piece of gear is this Legards of the Flameborn. You can see it takes 629 strength, which uh, is quite a darn bit. However, we have that Defense Mastery talent, which lowers the, the um, requirements. We also have Odysseus Armor, which lowers the requirements further. So it's... It's less strength than I would need. However, you'll do just fine with the Defense Mastery talent uh, that lowers the strength requirements. So, to reiterate, strength and dex, get enough to wear gear. Neither of them will increase your damages, so you don't have to worry about that. 
when you're ready to start um, pumping into increasing your damage, dump as many attribute points as you can into intelligence. Right now, uh, I am pretty happy with the amount of intelligence that I have. Uh, so any other attribute points that I get from this point onward, I personally am going to be investing into health and maybe a teeny bit into energy, but I'm going to go into health because I want the extra survivability. Those of you uh, out there that prefer more glass cannon builds or don't need as tanky of a build as I personally like may feel differently. You can invest into intelligence instead, but to each their own. Just make sure you get enough strength and dexterity to wear the gear that you want to wear and then dump the rest into intelligence. That's really all you need to remember as far as uh, stats go. So as far as gameplay goes, let's, uh, let's go kill some enemies and I will explain how to play the build. So first thing and uh, most important thing is you're going to want to do, uh, remember the keys you have bound to rally, quick recovery, and uh, heat shield because you're going to be rotating them often. Rally, I usually rotate uh, in between battles and during battle if it is up. Heat shield, constantly remember to uh, cast it on yourself. Also, one thing that's worth remembering is uh, heat shield will be cast on whatever you're mousing over at the time. So if you're mousing over your pet instead of yourself, you're going to cast it on your pet instead of yourself. So keep that in mind. So these fights are pretty basic with these bears. Uh, volcanic orb is the main thing that we are going to be using for dealing damage, like I said before. So usually what I like to do for this build is pull some enemies, drop an eruption, and then stand on top of your eruption and chuck your volcanic orbs at the enemies. Uh, also, when you're waiting for Volcanic Orb to come up on cooldown, it doesn't hurt to rotate uh, Fire Nova in there. And like I said before, I usually use, uh, what is it, Meteor Shower? I think it is, Meteor Rain, sorry. I usually use Meteor Rain when I, uh, I run into a pack of enemies and then I will drop Meteor Rain down on top of them. And then I'll usually drop a Volcanic Orb while I'm waiting on Meteor Rain to, you know, come down from the sky. And that's usually all it takes for, uh, for that for a pack of enemies sometimes it takes a little bit more but maybe two volcanic orbs instead of one but for the most part i usually depend on meteor rain to uh take out the pack of enemies for me that's one of the main things that i like using meteor rain for and like i said here's unyielding phalanx sometimes i'll do that just drop an unyielding phalanx and that will take out most of the enemies for me as well for the most part, you're going to be playing this build like a caster, despite wearing mostly tanky gear. Like, uh, you won't run up there and be doing any melee damage. You won't even, even when, uh, when Volcanic Orb is on cooldown, you won't be swinging your sword. Well, you will if you hold left click and you, uh, like, spam the button. Then you'll, you'll swing your sword in place. But whether or not it hits anything is, you know, up to, I guess, uh, your random, random rolls. Since we aren't using our melee weapon, we're not going to do any points into offensive ability whatsoever. It won't be required since uh, our weapon is entirely a stats deck. So like uh, this fight, drop an eruption on the ground and I pop my fire nova and that's all it took to kill that entire pack of enemies. Easy peasy. Eruption, Volcanic Orb, and then, oops, I hit Colossal Form. There's Fire Nova. That'll take out basically everything right there. Here's a, uh, come on, Meteor Shower, go off. Here's a Meteor Shower. It'll probably kill everything in the area. As you can see, it did. That's, uh, that is, like I said before a few times, that is what I like Meteor Shower for. It takes out the entire pack for me. So here's, uh, the power of, uh, whatever you call it, Unyielding Phalanx. If you rewind the video right there, you'll see how fast they killed everything. They killed everything in like less than three seconds. And that's another uh, pack clearing ability that I like to do. And essentially, uh, to elaborate a little bit more on that, by pack clearing ability, I mean I save those abilities specifically for packs of enemies. Like uh, 
I will run into a pack of enemy knowing that I have, you know, Meteor Rain up, pop it on that pack of enemies, and I can count on that ability to pretty much clear that entire pack of enemies. And then I can move on to the next pack where I'll, you know, do Eruption, Volcanic Orb spam, or I'll do, you know, whatever it may be. But, as you can see... Hold on. When I start taking spike damage like that, I'll know that I forgot to cast Quick Recovery or Rally. Because when you have Quick Recovery up, uh, you take significantly, like noticeably less damage. And the reason for that is, uh, if you read the Quick Recovery skill, like we'll do right here real fast, you'll notice it reduces shield recovery time. So the way that shields work in Titan Quest is you're allowed to block one attack, I think every three seconds, and shield recovery time reduces the amount of uh, time uh, between blocked attacks that you have to wait. So if you have like 100% shield recovery time, that means you'll be able to block an attack, you know, without any, uh, or it might be a very, very short cooldown. It might be like one tenth of a second or something like that. But it will dramatically increase the amount of uh, damage you can block. Because as is, without any shield uh, recovery chance, uh, without any shield block recovery, sorry, um, the blocking is not very good. I mean, once every three seconds, and you can only block for the amount that is on your shield, I think it is. So you block like 300 damage once every three seconds, which is, I mean, not very good at all. It's, it's not going to save your life. It's not really going to make any noticeable difference. But with quick, quick recovery up at all times, it does make a noticeable difference. And uh, as you can see here, I am chugging mana potions. Basically, uh, every other fight, I have to chug a bunch of mana potions. That's why uh, energy reduction uh, helps so much. As you can see, the unyielding phalanx basically just tore those enemies to shreds. But this is essentially all there is to the Juggernaut build. Volcanic Orb and Eruption you'll be using almost every fight. I'd totally recommend uh, Fire Nova. It's only a 10 second cooldown, so you can pretty much use that every fight too. And it does a decent amount of damage anyway. Well, it does a minor amount of damage, to correct myself. And then uh, anytime unyielding phalanx is up and meteor rain are up i recommend you use them to uh basically take out the pack of enemies like this pack of enemies is just going to get be a torn to shreds by unyielding phalanx well they're actually surviving pretty darn good compared to the other enemies but that's uh and here's uh another pack of enemies that i'll take out with meteor shower basically as you can see they're all at quarter health after meteor shower And if you notice there too, actually I'll show you the difference between uh, having quick recovery up and not having quick recovery up. And that'll be my last lesson for this video. I w shall show you the power of quick recovery. So it'll be fading here in a second. There you go, it faded. So look how fa look at how much damage these enemies do to me. That's quite a bit. I had to start like running around and kiting really, really quick. So there's Rally. Still taking a lot of damage. Here's Quick Recovery. So there's still a lot of enemies, so I'm still taking a lot of damage, but this isn't the best demonstration. There, I can kind of just sit there and take it. Had to pop a potion, though. And that, uh, that Lay on Hands thing that saved me right there was that, uh, whatever you call it. The Apples of Idun relic. So here's the downside of Colossus form. See how like I'm ripping all over the place? A little bit frustrating. There you go though. That probably wasn't the best demonstration because there was too many mobs on me and uh, I can only block one attack however long it is but Quick Recovery is a very, very powerful uh, ability that I do recommend. Uh, if you can, if you get enough recharge reduction to keep it up at all times, it's it's definitely going to be worth keeping up. And uh, I guess I can end with giving you one last piece of information. 
Uh, as far as attack damage converted to health goes, I don't really recommend you get that on this build. Uh, I personally experimented with it a bit before switching to my Myrm Myrmidon's pendant that you see me wearing right now. Uh, n almost no eruption didn't give me any attack damage converted to health. Um, volcanic orb gave me a little bit, but it, it didn't seem like that much. Meteor rain, I don't think gave me any, and I don't think fire nova gave me any either. So this build just doesn't really benefit that much from attack damage converted to health. So I don't really recommend you invest into it anyway. But that's really all there is that, uh, that I can teach you guys and show you for Juggernauts. Hopefully this video uh, helped you guys out. If it did, leave me a like because it helps me out. And if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, or if I got anything wrong, let me know in the comment section below. Aside from that though, I will catch you guys around in future Titan Quest videos. Peace.